Hello everyone, Praise Good here. Welcome back to more Tears of the Kingdom. Last time, we beat up a Flame Gleok, got the first part of the Misko's Treasure of Awakening, and did a little spelunking to find a shrine. And now the actual shrine in question. Because I don't think there's anything really else of importance around here. Like, we've actually probably done a full loop of this area underneath. Yeah, this is the full loop of this area underneath. We've already come in here. We've already gotten pretty stinking wrench off of everything. So, let's go ahead and head into the shrine that's just over here. God, but I... I mean, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. And I can gamble. Darn. <laughs> I'm right here. Let's just go to the shrine. And then... Yeah, then we can hit... I might uh, actually come from this. I might actually come from the Linder's Brow Skyview Tower after this. After the shrine. Just to hit up the, or, yeah, after the shrine, just to hit up the other two shrines and a, and a, uh, what is it? Oh, and also hit up a, I'm pretty sure it's a Misko's quest that is located over there. That I think is the third part of Misko's Armor of Awakening quest that we're on right now. And of course it is a freebie. Is it the right? Oh no, I hate the, okay. I hate the shrine because it starts off pretty simple. I roll, I whack a ball, it goes in a gopher hole. Oh, that croquet! No, not croquet! Not with a straight stick, with a little screwed up stick! I whack a ball, it goes in. <laughs> Sorry. Listen. God, you know, God or various deity, rest his soul. I love Robin Williams. Even though my improv is nowhere near his skill level, that, that man is probably responsible for any, any iota of improv skill I have. Anyway, see, even with, not with straight balls, I'll just whack a ball, it goes in a gopher hole, eventually. Now, I gotta think, because I want to say uh, the treasure is somewhere nearby where we're standing. Somewhere nearby. Kind of just peeking around. It could also be just as simple as... Okay, I found the treasure. So this particular, this, this one, this one was a head scratcher for me when I did it. Not the treasure, the, uh, the final part of it, which we'll get to in a second here. But I want to, I want to use, this is kind of the shape we're dealing with here, sort of. Actually, why am I doing it like that? Put the smallest on top. Make a makeshift ladder out of this. Hit. Okay. Well, makeshift ladders don't have to, don't have to be perfect in, in, the, in the realm of Tears of the Kingdom. A ladder is a ladder, no matter how many times you slice it like a cu like a cucumber. And I believe that is the only treasure? Yes, it is. Cool. Uh, I didn't check. Did I? I got the treasure in that one, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Kind of a moment of panic there. So, this particular... This particular... Uh, this particular set of balls. This ball and a cup puzzle. So I'm just going to set up the picture. Now, don't roll off. So you look at it here. You look at this puzzle here and you would think, oh, just, well, actually, I kind of got the right setup here. You know, or I kind of got the right setup here. You know, just take the ball, take the ball, let it roll off, and it will do its thing. Now, I'm going to do something just dumb. And I'm not going to do it the way it's intended to. But I'm just going to kind of roll it off this way. That is not the way it's supposed to go. You're supposed to like, kind of like figure out how to set up the ball so it rolls and then it slides off and slams into that. This is kind of the idea I had. I almost did it. So that is kind of the idea I went with initially. But I think the idea that worked for me in the end is when I effectively started to give up and just put the two, put the small ball in the middle. I put the small ball in the middle like this, and I just let it roll like I was doing a second ago. Uh, sort of. I've... Gosh, I don't remember exactly what I did anymore. Nope. Come back to me. So 
So I guess I did it like this, where I just... Rolled it off like that, sort of. Uh, except not that. Hold on, can I hit you? Come back, let's try it again. Yeah, this... This is the one that gave me a lot of trouble when I was doing this on my own playthrough. So... Instead of me just mumbling into a microphone saying, Oh, I had so much trouble with it. Let me actually just meet with you when I actually get the right trajectory of it. I gave up. After I'm sitting here trying to do it for a... When I'm trying to do this puzzle and I keep trying to do it for a solid five to ten minutes, if I can't figure it out, I'm going to cheat it. So, yeah, I mean, I may have included, like, the run right before where I felt like it was, like, the most possible... Uh, uh, what is it? The most possible factual way to get the proper setup for success. If it didn't work after what I thought was the best, I'm not going to sit here for another 20 minutes trying to just guess and check constantly. I'm just going to throw my... Solution at the button. Surprise, we're at the Skyview Tower. I should have picked a better time to mess around with some loose skin in my hand, shouldn't I? So, there is. Sorry, if there, if I'm think, if I'm right, there is a. Uh, are they both above ground? Well, hell, the shrines that we're after are both above ground. Well, shoot, that'll make that, e that'll make that easy in a second here. But the first thing I want to handle is that. That right there, dead ahead of us. Is the mass sword back? It is. So, the what I want to handle is a bit of a uh, timing thing, if that makes sense. This is a treasure... This is a Misko's treasure that we don't have the hint to quite yet, but I'm, like I've said, about five times now, because, you know me, I love to repeat myself. This is, this is a Misko's treasure that you can do here, where I think it literally involves making a faux clock hand, and making it so when the, when the time matches up right, the shadow of the, from where we're standing, the shadow of the 6 o'clock hits the 12 o'clock. Now, it could be from here. Yeah, it could be from where we're standing now. This could be it could be more like 3 and 9. I'll handle that in due time, but we do have to cut down a few trees. By the way, these are... By the way, if it doesn't look like it, these are trees. These are some of the goofiest trees in the game. Because it's like... They may, be, they may be real trees. These may be like real trees in the real world, and I'm just being weird because, you know, I'm... I'm haha, -ha, me, dumb American. Don't will not venture outside of my normal wheelhouse of of, of uh, expertise, but I am going to set up a very large clock hand or very large, yeah, very large clock hand, and we're gonna have to wait about until it gets to be midday. And unfortunately, we will have to wait because the fact that it is raining. Because of the fact of the rain, we will have to wait about, until about midday. But we're going to handle this Misko's treasure first. And then come at it another way. Or come at it from the other way. Now, let me think. So as I'm standing, sun... Oh, no, it would be standing on this pillar right here. Now, how you want to handle this? How you want to handle this, how you want to handle this quest? And how I handle it? Gosh, I really hope the rain doesn't ruin it. Is you basically want to build it so you can get yourself on top of this. Actually, why am I worried about doing it like this? I don't have to worry about even walking up it. I can just ascend through the log. Let me ascend through the log. 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 Through the log. Through the log. Through the... Nope. Alright, we're going to have to climb it and hope we don't slide off. And because it's raining, slip and slide. Okay, never mind. Well, this is the... Uh... I'll get on top here in just a minute, and we also have to wait for it to be about noon, so I'm going to be standing around here doing jack squat for a bit. But, we basically have to wait for... We have to basically get on top of this pillar standing right here. And then, hold this log so it extends out and makes a shadow. The shadow from this... The top of this basin, reaching the shadow at the... The, the shadow that comes from this basin, to extend to that basin. And that will open up this right here. Another Misko's Treasures. 
I don't know which one. It, like I said, it, I don't know exactly which one. I'm assume, If I remember right, it is the part three of this Awakening set. But we'll find out in due time. So I'm going to cut ahead. I'll meet you when it's the clock is fast forwarded. I can't even set up a campfire to make this go faster. At least not right now. And I don't think I want to right at this moment just because of the juxtaposition. Not the juxtaposition. Just because of how it'll all handle itself. Anyway, I'll be back with you in a moment. Basically around noon is what you're aiming for on this time. You basically just want to gather up four or five logs. And hopefully it's only four because I've got five, four. I have four right now. But you specifically want to have the shadow of the... You want to have the shadow of these logs touch from... 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock on a clock face. Hopefully that makes sense because I now realize in saying that that I am saying this to a bunch of people that might be growing up at an age where they have never had to learn to read an analog clock. Oop, picked up my controller. So yeah, I'm not going to rush it. I'm just going to kind of hold this here because... I'm going to have to hold this here because I, I literally got up and walked away for a minute to make sure this would work, but uh, pick it up just so I can kind of see what's going on here. I'm getting anxious and nervous because this could be a part that I just cut out entirely while I reposition myself on the other stone head, but I'm pretty sure this is the solution to this one. And who knows, this might get it cut all together because I have to... I... I'm not allowed to do it like this. I'm actually supposed to be doing it from... Uh, what you call it? I'm supposed to have gotten the other parts of the puzzle together first. Never mind. So yeah, basically right about noon. I think you may have a window of like noon to one o'clock to get this done. But all you gotta do is make sure the shadows touch. Again, six o'clock to noon. And you're done. Now, I don't know... Again, this could be... This could be Misko's Awakening stuff part three. This could be something else entirely. But this is a Misko's quest. And that is our, that's our boy right up there. Sup, you big nerd. Oh, drop it right down on me, please. Thank you. Man, you are so nice to me today. But yeah, that, that's it. This is literally it. Just make a clock happy. Now this is, yep, that's part three. <clears throat> So, I'll pull up the map in just a second here. Even though, like, it'll say, oh, you've actually, or it'll give us, like, a weird, oh, you've done it. So, basically, we have to go to this, we have to go to this cave here, which is on top of the ancient columns. To go to here, which we'll do the part two in due time. To go to here to do this part two, that will take us back up here to do part three. But as I said, the Awakening set, as you can see there, it is definitely the remake of Link's Awakening set. It's not like some weird pixelate style, though. No, it's like the weird toy looking set. Which a lot of people I don't know if I'm just noticing it from like one perspective or if it's actually is multiple, but I've noticed I did notice that like a lot of people that were speedrunning Tears of the Kingdom when it was new, new, they would rush to get this right away. I don't know if it was like the most if it the game was set up in just such a way where it was the most optimal time to get that for armor increase. Or because it actually does give a strength increase when you do upgrade it. I don't know. But I've been, I saw a lot of runs where that particular mask was just the first thing people got. And they wore nothing else. Anyway. Um, let's work back out of this hole now that we're done here. And handle these two shrines before I wrap up my recording session. Because as much as I enjoy kind of rambling and rumbling mindlessly while playing this game. My... My stamina for recording of long hours in a day is nowhere near what it used to be. Could be the fact that I'm becoming an urge man. I'm, and uh, my stamina in general is not what it was back when I did Breath of the Wild. Shame to think that seven years ago I... Shame to think of that seven years ago I sat down with Breath of the Wild and just burned through that whole son of a gun and thing in like two months. And then spent the better part of another month finishing it up, but... Eh, whatever. Fortune favors... I mean, fortune favors the bold, fortune favors the young. However you want to look at it. Huh, can I reverse time on that? Uh, maybe I'll learn if I get closer. 
Now it's not lighting up, so I don't think it fell from the sky. And as much as I would like, well, I should use up this weapon. Get up! I have saved you. My payment is is whatever dropped. I'm out now. That's just got to be somewhere. Just like strange man falls in the strange man falls in the sky. Oh. Strange man falls in the sky. His only his only request for a reward is to me first. His only his only uh, want for a reward is to get uh, is to pick up is to pick up little drops and or uh, to pick up the parts that fall off the monster that was assaulting you. Thank you, but this is my reward now. Don't you want anything else? No, I'm good. Thanks though. But I'm offering I'm offering services. I'm good. Thanks though. What a strange creature. Uh, ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, this one. Okay. This is a fun shrine. This is a fun shrine that has a couple parts to it. A couple fun parts to it. But I, I really do like this shrine. It's closer to the center of Hyrule, so it's an easier shrine in general. But it's also just kind of gets you thinking about some uh, puzzle solutions with involving... Or puzzle solutions involving Ball. Because you must remember... In this game a lot, ball is life. Also, I can see I can see where it's not a perfect sphere. Like I can see the rough edges on this one now that I'm looking at it. Anyway. Just remember, ball is life. Now, we also need to carry ball down this slope. And we need a, something a little more not so eloquent, but we need something additional to help get ball down this slope. And really the simple solution to that is literally just to take a couple sticks and run it alongside it. There's nothing, there's, it's nothing, it's nothing more than that really, I'll be honest, it's nothing more than that. It's literally just put two sticks on opposite sides of the ball. Doesn't even have to be that symmetric because the line is a little, because the line is a little shallower, but make ball life. That's it. Now, I will have to construct something here in just a second for to get it down the rest of the way. But, before we do anything else, we are going to make a very simple, rudimentary thing that will get us across this gap. Uh, as soon as I can figure out how to spin this shape, we will do exactly as I said. There we go. Now, I'm pretty sure that's really all that we have to do to, like, have a safe spot to get to. The only problem is getting there. Uh. Hmm. I could do something as simple, probably, as just, you know. I feel like I could do something as simple as just, like, make a platform to, like, jump up through or something. Or jump off of. Uh, sort of. Okay. Is this that's good enough. All right. Get up. Okay. Well, that's a death. Well, not a death. That's a fallout. Let's go, baby. The idea is there. The spirit is not so much. I'm pretty sure this is a much more elo whoa, 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 whoa. It's probably a much more eloquent way to do this. Oh, as as I proceed to do it on the second take. Good job. No, I probably could have just built that platform, set it in a spot, and then bring it back. I probably could have done something as simple as that. Anyway. Uh, drop... I'll drop this. Is that the only one? That's the only one. Cool. <clears throat> anyway, we return back to our regularly scheduled program. A ball is life. Now, we don't need these silly... We don't need these silly sticks. They can go to the void. To the void with you. Although we do need to make a kind of a rudimentary carriage to hold this on to the thing. So, the best way I can think of to set up this rudimentary carriage of sorts is not so much what we got sitting right now, even though this will cause the ball to stay still. What we need is to be able to... Hmm... 
We just made, basically need to make a hole. We need to make a hole to basically like slip this onto the rail with. I doubt it's going to be that simple, but let's give it a go. Like it's, it's, it's on there. Sort of on there. Can you just slide far enough down to like, nope. Okay. I'll try it again. Uh, the pieces have not respawned. Okay, that's fine. I can get this back out over here. So, I think how I did this is I kind of what I did before. I basically built, I basically made a, uh, not really a Faraday cage, but I made a cage around this. I made a cage around the ball, sort of. Or not around the ball, around this rail part. But I think I made a uh, a one piece extension, uh, like we're like I'm doing right now. I made a one piece extension, like this, and then, oh, not picture, and then I reattached it on the side here, so there was a hole. Eh, uh, not there. Dang it! I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin everything to do this. Yeah, I made a hole, like this in the opening. And I still hung the ball off of it. I hung the ball off in such a way, but it basically made a kind of a foolproof tumble cage for the ball to like live inside of. So that way, even if the ball was like, ah, no, I'm going to roll off, it it rotated all the way around. Um, let me let me preempt it really quick here just to be safe. So, yeah, like this. This is kind of what I did. So even if it rolled too far, it was like, oh, wait, I can't roll that far. That's it. That's what I did. Not really so much a eloquent sol solution to the puzzle, but it's a, lo a solution to the puzzle. Now, if I could just get the ball out without removing myself from the equation, that'd be great. And I'm going to push that up there, and hopefully it'll just kind of naturally roll in. It won't. Of course it won't. Because why would it do the thing that makes the most sense? Fine, give me a quick put. Give you a quick push. Now we roll in. Thank you. I want to just do it the simple way. I didn't want to have any like fluff and guff going. So I literally just wanted to have it roll in from the very ba far back side. So I think with that, I'll uh, I might go back to the sky view. I'll look at the map, but I think I might go back to the sky view tower and launch from there to get to the final shrine in this area. And I think I'll stop by Lookout Landing to get our get one more heart back. And I'll probably call it a session after that. Actually, belay that. Belay that. Uh, course of action. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and excuse me, walk on top of Mount Rome here. Mainly because I want to see if I can see the arena anytime near or anywhere close by. And debate on it. But I don't think I'm actually going to end the recording session off once I get the shrine. Because there is another mini game around here that involves driving a vehicle. Again. And it's in the canyon down or canyon canyon down below us. I kind of glossed over it, and I remember that the mini game was there as I was looking at the map. It's like, oh right, the mini game. So this this particular session might be a little bit longer just because I'm gonna handle one additional fun thing. Man, okay, can either you get rid of them or the I'm getting rid of them. I am gonna be so sad when that eventually breaks. And I, I guess due to the nature of what's going on here, I may just keep this out just to protect us from any book goblins. Actually, wait, this mountain. This is, oh, this, this mountain. I remember this one. This is the mountain where, uh, excuse me. Well, it's a Korok right there. This mountain is actually where we uh, had, where you could have a foot race with a guy to get, and uh, depending upon how quickly you get up the, the mountain, with or without other abilities, uh, how quick, depending on how quickly you got up the mountainside, you actually got some rupees. So it was a foot race with a reward. And I think a lot of people, I can't remember, uh, I can't remember if people used uh, Revali's Gale to get up the mountain faster, or if that was considered cheating, and then you had, pe but people used uh, speed up potions, you, uh, cheaper speed up potion to get going at just the right speed to outpace the person you were foot racing with. 
But yeah, I remember R Mount Rome. Named after the late king. And in this game, the very late king. I guess I'm, go I guess I'm going... Uh, now I'm just going up here for... Hold on, how many sunset fly fireflies do I have? Okay, I've got 18, so I don't need to worry about gathering anymore. Maybe for gear, if I really care enough, but I'm not going to show all the gear. Oh, Addison's up here now. Oh, Addison. What, was that Helium Mushroom? Cool. I saw it through the fog. That was my that was my cohorts. Uh, This one's a rock support, huh? And that's our goal just down there. So, uh, turn vertical? No. How did I, how do I get this to stand up like it is? I could very much just, I could very much just cheat the system and use a, I could very much just cheat the system and use a couple of, uh, what you call it? Huh. That's almost how I want it. Hold on. Where is, I just wanted to get it in such a way where it just basically wedges. Well, it's wedged. Oh, well, oh, it stood. Sort of. Not perfect, but it's, but even if it's not my finest work, I'm still going to keep it there. Anyway. Kind of nice to come back out here to this area. Memories of Breath of the Wild. Man, man, okay, I just realized how much rupees I have from doing the that freaking uh, flight range game. Holy cow. Anyway, that was done. Uh, yeah, I think all we have. Oh, there is that there. Okay. I've. I think at this point I've kind of changed my mind. I want to. What I want to. Oh, there's a rock right there. I was about to say, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something else. But no, I think I know how I'm gonna handle. I'm. Gonna, I think I know what I'm gonna do to just handle the end of this uh, session here today. Is that close enough? Cool. So let me do this shrine, and I'll make a minor note to myself for the next recording session, whenever that might be. I'll make a minor note to myself that basically says, "Hey, once you're, when you're done, go ahead and uh." Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and head to this, uh, stable right next door and then jump into the canyon to do this, the side quest or the, uh, mini game. Cause I am making the, I am making the conscientious effort to make sure I finish up all these shrines in this area today. And I guess the turn in will happen another time cause I'm not in danger of dying. At least, at least in the immediate future. Oh, of course, now we get to get Boo Boo babied. Go ahead and turn this on. Because we're going to have to... Because they're going to teach us about bullet time. <sighs> I really... <sighs> I guess it's just how I'm handling it and why it's a problem for me. If This is probably fantastic for people who are new players. To teach them how the whole bow combat works and everything. So, but yeah, this this is basically to teach you about the bow combat. I've already gone over this in great detail. I've already gone over bow combat in great te detail. This is nothing new at this point. Oh, no. Several enemies at once. Oh, is it actually just going to make me shoot at them? You better give me arrows to, re uh, to, re to recover what I've spent here today. Good shot, you missed. Oh, it, 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 they aren't even going to make me jump up through the platform? It's literally just critical shots? Okay. I, want, I don't know if we've done it already. Like, my memory of what's going on right now is all jumbled up. I want to say my memory of the game. My memory of this game is telling me that there was a point... Oh, hey, arrows right there. And a bow. 
Too bad. It's probably a poo poo bow. Um, my memory of this game definitely tells me that there was a uh, point where there's like a slow mo. Hey, have, would you like to learn how to do uh, do slow mo shots? And I don't know if we've done that shrine yet, or if that's a shrine that's to come. Ah, good. You you replaced my other falcon bow then. Yeah, that uh, that demon king's bow. It's already up to thirty power. Just because of just because of how everything's work, uh, how everything's planned out, we're up to that point. Oh, we're up to that point. Good, good English. Just because of our max health increase, our Demon's King bow is getting to be on par with all the other bows we've gathered so far in the journey. Anyway, as I said, this was gonna be the last thing I was gonna handle here. There's a glowing glyph. You we've probably seen it like three times now. Oh, where am I looking? Where is Bro looking? Yeah, there's a glowing glyph. You can kind of make it out from here right over there, but that is in a region we're not going to go to for a little bit. I'm more worried about this right now, but also about what's in the canyon. So let me find the rough starting point. I think it's right here. So in order of importance like this, I'll set up these uh, I'll set up these pins as a note to myself outside of editing. That's, that's what we're going to do next. But, oh, there's a Korok Seed right there. Uh, but I'll make that the next thing we do. So, everyone, next time on Tears of the Kingdom, we'll do the stable that's out here in this very far... Uh, basically, this stable that's gonna be, and this minigame that's in the last stops of this region. Sorry, it's, it's, bug it's not bugging me. Where is that technically located out there? It is in this region. Okay. We have our we have our set. We have our set of tasks. So we'll handle the stable, this Korok seed, this mini game, and then probably get this glyph that's up here. And we'll move on. And then we'll skip over the we'll probably maybe make a pit stop and look out landing, but we'll make a skip over that to start up on this region. And once that's all cleared up, we'll just go up here too. Anyway. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care. That is a sight to see right at the end, huh?